from Singapore's perspective, there is value to have the President represented on these international bodies. It enables us to be plugged into global conversations and to understand and help shape the thinking that takes place in these important and influential international bodies. But for this to happen, the President must be able to function credibly in these international bodies by lending his expertise to advance the agenda on broader issues of concern to these organisations. So we are presented with a novel issue. Should the President now be allowed to contribute independently in his private capacity when he takes on these international appointments? That's what this issue is about. Cabinet considered this carefully, and we concluded that President should be allowed to do so, to contribute in these international appointments in his independent and private capacity, as this is beneficial for Singapore. These are reputable international bodies with global reach and with eminent persons serving on their respective boards. The President's continued involvement in these organisations is in Singapore's national interest. To be clear, when we say that the President serves in his private cap capacity, it does not mean that he is doing this outside of his work duties. These international appointments are core to the President's international diplomacy role. As head of state, they are in fact how we project Singapore's influence and strengthen our networks in, in the world. But allowing the President to serve in his private capacity allows him to act independently in achieving the aims of the international bodies, subject, of course, to the necessary safeguards of our national interest. Such an arrangement would then enable the President to take on appointments that help to expand Singapore's influence and networks while acting independently on these international bodies. The provisions in this amendment bill will put in place a proper framework under which these and future appointments are governed. The framework would not just apply to this president and this government, but also to future presidents and future governments. And in, in developing the framework, Cabinet had regard to the following broad considerations. One, the framework would only apply to appointments in international organisations. It will not apply in the domestic context. In the domestic context, the current position will continue to apply and the President will not have an independent role outside of the specific discretionary powers conferred on him by the Constitution. Two, any international appointment for the President to act in his private capacity must be justified by the national interest. Importantly, our own policy matters must remain the responsibility and prerogative of the Cabinet. Any appointment must therefore be supported by Cabinet in the first place. And if need be, Cabinet must be able to intervene to advise the President on how he acts in these appointments. And three, at the same time, the President should have a say in deciding whether to take on such appointments. He should be able to decline such appointments if, for example, he considers them to be incompatible with his constitutional functions and any appointment must be on the public record in the interest of transparency and accountability.